Hi, uh, good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Poem Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in and peace and blessings be upon you and your family this day. Now, we are going to get right back into For Women Only. We're in uh, take number three and we're almost done with this book. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into take three, which goes like this. Of which chapter? Okay, we're in chapter number eight. And I'm going to let you know what the title of that chapter is. It's uh, the truth about the way you look. So let's go ahead and get into this take. Now, I'm going to share something with you that is difficult to hear. This two-part comment is from a close friend whose heart I trust completely. I'm including it because I found it is truly how men think and because I believe it helps to make a critical distinction. My friend's candid comment. Sometimes I'll meet a guy who looks just like an average guy. But then if I meet his wife, and she is huge and very out of shape and just sloppy, I feel so sorry for him. It sounds terrible, but my gut just churns for him. It's this. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sort of compassion. That sounds absolutely terrible to say out loud. But it is what every man is thinking. But then sometimes, I'll meet a man whose wife is overweight, but she takes care of herself. She puts some effort into her appearance. She dresses neatly or does her makeup and hair. If she is comfortable in her own skin and is confident, you don't notice the extra pounds. I look at that husband and think, he did well. If she puts some effort into her appearance and is comfortable in her own skin, you don't notice the extra pounds. I look at that husband and think, he did well. I was so confused by the seeming contradiction that I asked Jeff to help me sort it out. Is it Looks that matter are confidence. Hmm. There's no getting around the fact of that, excuse me, of course men are attracted to looks, he said. But looks are just one part of the package and it is the whole package that is important. Since I was still struggling to understand, Jeff thought for a minute then mentioned the names of two married women we both no. One is very slender, willowy blonde with a perky personality. The other is middle-aged, no longer slender, slender, excuse me, with a gentle, confident air and a sharp mind. Jeff explained, they look entirely different, but both are attractive, physically attractive, even. I think both their husbands did very well. Where do I start? If you're pretty sure this chapter was meant for you, but you want to run it by your husband first, my recommendation is simple and heartfelt. Don't. Most men are winsomely sensitive about this subject. Mostly because they remember how winsomely sensitive we've been on it in the past. Think about it. If your husband approached you about this, no matter how gentle, what would you do? Hmm. Probably the same as I have done in similar situations, bust into tears. That is enough to make most men so distressed and uncomfortable that they think that they will never bring it up again. One man who had dipped his toe in those waters before said, 
I know that if I bring it up, it will just hurt her feelings too much. So I'm going to preserve her feelings at the expense of my happiness, our satisfaction, or whatever you want to call it. Your man is not likely to be completely truthful, even if you in all earnestness want the truth. Consider instead applying just rule, my own husband, to the rescue again. It's a self-inventory that's been confirmed by pretty much every other guy I've spoken with. Just rule is, if you are not realistically happy with your overall appearance and fitness level, assume He's not either. Don't make him tell you that. Both for your sake and the sake of your future together. And for the sake of your sanity. Not the words realistically and overall. We're not talking about someone who is fit and trim. But thinks she needs to lose five pounds. Or is dissatisfied with a certain feature. A man gets very frustrated when the woman in his life endlessly anguishes about her appearance, but takes little or no meaningful action. Many of the comments on the survey echoed what one man wrote. If she wants to look better, she needs to do something about it. Not just complain about it all the time. Your man is not likely to be completely truthful, even if you, in all earnestness, want the truth. At this point, some of you may be throwing your hands up in despair, even if effort is really what matters. How you wonder, are you supposed to add to this effort to your many others? Well, once you decide to take action, some very good news opens up to you. As it turns out, the person who cares so deeply about your appearance is, in almost every case, ready to be part of the solution. Good news part one. Your man wants to help you. Almost every man I talk to or talk with, said he would do whatever it takes to help his partner make this particular effort. And that was overwhelmingly confirmed by the follow-up survey. Imagine, your wife's significant other is overweight and really wants to make the effort to get in shape for you. But her slate is already full. She has no time during the day. And in the evening, she has to watch the kids or drive to their activities. How much effort, financial expenses, or additional responsibility would you be willing to take on so she can do whatever, what's necessary to get in shape or whatever is necessary to get in shape? That's not in the book. I just added that. Choose one answer. I do whatever it takes to help her and gladly make a significant effort, 63%. I'd be willing to make a reasonable effort, 31%. I would lend a hand, but I'd privately be annoyed, 2%. I prefer not to do much. It's really her responsibility, 1%. Only four out of 400 men said they'd be unwilling to help. And it's highly unlikely that your man is one of those cads. Unaccommodating husbands. Although everyone else, 97%, said they would help willingly. One interviewee told me if a guy's wife suddenly verbalizes that she determines to drop some weight and needs his help, any guy is going to jump to do it. What can I do? Here's a credit card. Almost every man said he would willingly help his partner make this effort. 
My husband drew a useful comparison. Look, he said, when we were teenagers, the guys always busy playing football or whatever. But if our girlfriends need a ride to the tanning salon, we drop everything and drive them in a heartbeat. We even give them money to go. It was in our best interest. And that feeling doesn't change as we get older. We're willing to help our wives. What changes is the busyness of our schedules. But even then, there are things almost any guy can and will do to help if he sees you're serious about it. Maybe he watches the kids in the evening or drives uh, the soccer carpool so you can go work out. Maybe he stops bringing up particular dangerous food into the house. Maybe he cooks dinner so you don't have to prepare foods you're trying to avoid. Or maybe he agrees to go on the diet with you. Jeff has sheepily admitted that several diets he has tried were, at their core, veiled attempt to get me to join in. And remember, since it's your sincere concern and effort that matters most, you can expect to see relationship benefits coming your way very soon. Good News Part 2 There's a revolution in the resources to help you. Over the years, I tried almost every diet under the sun only to watch helplessly as the weight crept back. Can you relate? But now I've learned that almost everything I had known about helpful eating was wrong. No wonder nothing worked long term, thankfully. There has been a revolution in our scientific understanding of what eating well actually means. Eating good carbs and good fats and avoiding bad ones. And if you're like me, knowledge is the key to making a complete lifestyle change. Let me repeat that one. Knowledge is the key to making a complete lifestyle change. Without that knowledge, it is likely that we will keep sabotaging our efforts over the long term. Thankfully, several well-respected books are now available on what it really means to eat well and thus maintain a lifelong healthy weight. On a personal note, I feel like I can stick with my new eating habits for the rest of my life because of the education I gained from the South Beach Diet by cardiologist Dr. Arthur Agdestein. That's from this book, Me Personally Eat to Live. Check out book one and two. Mm-hmm. Um, back to this book. Good news, part three. God will help you. That's true. That's right. God will help you. You probably feel better by all this of this information, so let me encourage you. God will help you address this health and fitness issue in amazing ways once you realize you need to. Now that my eyes have been opened to the fact that my efforts are actually so important to my husband and conversely that my lack of effort is so hurtful, you wouldn't believe the difference it has made in my motivation. I feel like the Lord has blessed my desire to serve my husband and our mares by giving me a permanent internal motivation to have a healthy temple. And I know he will do the same for you. God will help you address this health and fitness issue in amazing ways once you realize you need to. I hope you have read this chapter prayerfully, allowing God to give you peace rather than a knot in your stomach. God is a God of peace. After all, and he, like our husband, loves us no matter what our imperfections are. That does complete chapter 8. Be blessed till chapter number 9. Words for your heart.
Till then, later y'all.